I've got too many decks handy, man. I realised. I know it's a problem of my own making. Well, I mean, I'm I'm staring down the barrel of wanting to build an eleventh deck because I don't want to take anything apart. But I'm also like, I'm in build mode, and it's like, no. I, I, can build, I have five at the moment. I'm currently building. I can. I, thank moving has really helped. Moving has stopped me because now I've had to pack everything away, and now it's away. I don't just walk into the room, look down at what I called the workshop. Where it has a pile here for that deck and a pile here for that deck. And every time I sit down, I'm like, oh yeah, and it's like reunites my thinking of it. So thankfully, I'm like, I just sleeved up these last two and I'm happy with them and I've tested them and they both play one. I'm like, cool. Anne's Rag will be built because I need another, I want a Gruel deck and it's going to be disgusting. <laughs> it's going to be fucking bad. Do you know what? When, um, when uh, God of Revels, what's Xenagos, his Xenagos, yeah. Xenagos, yeah, Xenagos, God of Revels. Everyone was like, oh man, this is like the, one of the most, most boogeymen of like EDH, really. And obviously being a Gruul deck, which is kind of weird because obviously attacky, attacky. Mm. And then there was a big old phase where people were like, do you know aggro in, in EDH just doesn't really happen? And now, now, now it's like, fuck it up. So we played we played against that naively fucking attacking tokens get double strike commander. From, mm. and, and every game it was just like, why am I getting hit for 58 damage? Where is this coming from? How does no one have removal? This is the thing. We're, we live in an age where people are starting to dial back on their removal, which is why aggro is king. Because aggro just gets to go, I play all my threats and no one's going to interact with them, right? And it's like, oh, well, it's just a three. I'm like, yeah, but then it does this other thing. It's like, oh, okay, it'll probably be fine. I'll put up some blockers. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter when they're flying. So, so Klaus, got double strike. That dragon from like... Yeah, he's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Magic the Flavouring, the Magic the Gathering podcast, where we talk about all things magic, flavour design, and a law. I am your host, Andy Mann. Hello, law. This is Nathan Cancel. <laughs> Murders at Karloff Manor. Yeah, not Markov. We'll get. We'll get. We'll do eventually. We'll do uh, the the redetectiving, and we'll go to Innistrad, and that'd be. Ugh. I know. We'll all have detectors on. Killers of plan. Killers of Karloff Manor of Markov. Fuck! I, I did it the wrong way around. Good, perfect. <laughs> Ludicrous. Uh, this is our flavour picks episode. It is. There's a lot to talk about. There is. So let's let's, let's get into it. it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, so, <laughs> so obviously our last episode was the uh, story, uh, the story for uh, um, murders of Karlov Manor, uh, which we lauded quite, quite, quite high. Uh, I think this is an interesting um, situation because I this is a set where I think that the story is from. from I, I, prefer, I think the Vortho side of this is much better than the Mel side of this. Interesting. Broadly speaking. Mm. I, so, so this this is a very divisive set mm. in terms of its aesthetic, in terms of its theming, the fact that it's a Ravnica set. All the all the parts of this set feels like someone has a real sort of hot take about it, mm. one way or the other. And for the first time in a long time, I find myself being on the side of, ah, but yeah, just fucking chill out, man. It's like it's fun, and everyone else is going, this is dumb. And usually I'm the one going, this is dumb. Dogs are dumb. Yeah, and like everyone the else, seven dwarves thing, right? Yeah, the seven dwarves is dumb, and everyone else is like, oh, it's fun fairy tale. Whereas this time I'm like, I, I quite. I like the hats. I like the trilbies. See, it's interesting, right? Because I think that this is... So I a big thing for this set for me, right, is it's similar to Rivals of Ixalan, of It's a backdrop set. And the two different things they wanted to do, they wanted to do this in, like, internal, underground-y kind of set, and the more they got into it, the more they realised they could just put this as the... Uh, and, and have rival, or have the plane of Ixalan be the backdrop to the idea of the set. Yeah. And again, it's a similar thing. If they clearly wanted to go, hey... Cluedo hasn't sold a lot recently. It's one of our properties. Is there anything we can do with that? Or we could do a murder mystery set, which I don't actually have any issue with. I also think the Cluedo set by itself is actually still kind of cool. I like the fact that yeah. they did a weird twist on Colonel Mustard and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's all fine. If we can have universes beyond, we can have Magic the Gathering does a thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like it's fine. similar to the Dungeons and Dragons aspect of where, even though that does feel like a more separated IP, Hasbro can kind of do this and I think it works. But it very much was clearly like we wanted to do a murder mystery set and they had, in my mind and in my opinion, take a bit of what you will, multiple better options to make the set feel more like it's fit within the, the environment. But Ravnica was more recognisable. And I know why they did it is because it's easier to care about the story side of it when it's characters that, you know, you've had time with. It's like, you know, the amount of time, the amount, we said this last week, like, Argus Cost being in it. Oh my God, that's sick. That's amazing. You know, of course, Lazav ends up getting a car because of course you would. Like, you don't get that kind of like... Mm. 
character depth and 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 almost like social ex- uh, expectation from any of the like from maybe some of the other planes like say maybe new capenna could this have been that now the angels came back maybe they started their own agency to try and figure things out and try and stamp down on crime mm. that could have been a good flip to what we've already seen from new capenna uh, uh, you know for 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 what for whatever you might want to say about it i'm i'm of the opinion that i like it is a microcosm. I think from, from a limited environment, I'm pretty, pretty sure it plays really, really well. I'm sure all of the different mechanics work really well, and the playtest team have done a fantastic job of making something that feels coherent when you're playing it. Take a step out, not 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 all the way out just to the story, ignoring all the cards, which I think was also pretty good, but into that middle ground between of where what we what we've always been talking about in this in this podcast of where does the flavor and the mechanic kind of come together? How does it work with the the world building of the plane that we're in? Does it feel like it fits? Does it feel like there are certain things that are missing or slightly off kilter in Rivals? Uh, not Rivals, that was that was years ago in <laughs> Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I felt like there were certain aspects of it that did feel like maybe they jarred a little because you could kind of tell where the seams were between Mm -hmm. their pre-existing plane and their new concept they tried to weave into it. I think those seams are much more obvious in this set. And I think there are bad things you can pull out of of that. And I will get into that a little bit. There are definitely good things I think work and it's very easy to go, "Ah, just just enjoy it for what it is. But I think the whole point is that those seams are way more noticeable and for all of the fucking internet people with their loud voices and wanting to disagree with everything it gave a lot of fuel to that and i think for for once they feel a little bit more justified in their opinions interesting i i think i agree with you in terms of in terms of you see the the big breaks from convention i'm gonna say rather than seems breaks from convention to be political about it i think my my uh, my answer to that in terms of someone who quite likes the fact that they've done something new it would be very easy <coughs> for me to just go you are 100% right, but I like that they've done that. Mm. But there wouldn't be much of a podcast if I did that. So, <laughs> End of episode. Here, here, here's my actual sort of like slightly approaching warm take. I think Ravnica is not as consistent in its design as people think that it is. I think Return to Ravnica Block and Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance slash War of the Spark. They, that wasn't a three set block, by the way, guys. It was a two set block with the chaser. I think that is like an era of Ravnica that we go, well, that's what Ravnica looks like until you go back to City of Guilds mm. and Ascension and you realise that the original Ravnica cards had a real high fantasy spin on them that was mm. way more akin to Dominaria than it was to what we would think of as Ravnica. If you especially look at cards like, um, is it Azorius Guild Mage? I know, yeah, because, yeah, they, they did the the guild guild mages in the original set and then it was like this copra guild mage yeah, or whatever exactly. else. so you look at something like a azorius guild mage this like slightly sexualized it, i mean it wasn't because it wasn't looking through a sexual gaze but it was like a very scantily clad vidalcan mage mm. do you know what i mean which is nothing like the vidalcans that they would kind of like later print just in terms of like a visual identity there was a lot more like knights in shining armor aesthetic going on there was a lot more sort of just generic fantasy and then they refined it for RTR, mm. right? Into like, okay, people liked that. Let's really hit the guilds. I mean, if you look at Agris Koss as a as a character, and like the clothing that he wears as a Boris Legionnaire, it's actually slightly out of step in his original designs from mm. what he's wearing now, which is what we think of when we think of a Boris Legionnaire. And I think moving forwards for them to develop Ravnica in a way that isn't just here's a set with five guilds, here's a set with the other five, mm. here's a third one where we mush them together. Because they only have this one swing. It's just one set, right? Mm. To do something that's not guild-based, but they wanted to use Ravnica for better or for worse. Doing this detective noir aesthetic that, yes, maybe would fit Nuka Pena better. Yes, we'll see cards. I know you have a couple lined up that maybe look even like they could be in Neon Kamigawa. Mm. Or Neon Dynasty Genesis Kamigawa anime. Whatever it was called. <laughs> I, I think that's valid, but I also don't think it's as much of a sin for Ravnica as people think it is. True. So I'm the way. Wait, so as soon as you said um, about uh, Guilds of Ravnica, Rag for Allegiance, I'm thinking if you added this set as the third set instead of War of the Spark and have that as a block, aesthetically, I think it as a lot it is quite coherent. We mentioned this in our last episode, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that there is. I think what you're saying is exactly right. I do think that Ravnica at this point, if you're not doing a block structure because that's what they've said they're not, they're not doing anymore. You don't, as you say, give enough time to each guild to kind of express and have their own time in the sun. So if you're not doing that and you're not making it about the guilds, 
what then at that point is Ravnica and what's it trying to do? And obviously the last mm. set we had before this was War of the Spark and it was like, okay, that's kind of the, again, the Ravnica is the backdrop to this, this you know, Eternals war kind of thing happening. It's Planeswalker Battle Royale, mm-hmm. as it were. And now we, it's a similar thing of like, again, if we need to have a murder mystery set and we can put it in somewhere that has a modern aspect, like people would likely to have these jobs, people like to have the technology, even the fucking... Um, um, fashion to be able to kind of fit the what we need for this aesthetic mm-hmm. does Ravnica work for it yes okay it does and I think I do I do agree with you I do I do think there isn't anything necessarily so wrong when you take when you look at it from that scope because I agree that I don't think Ravnica has enough of a strong enough identity if you take it if you take the guilds away for it not to kind of have to lean on something else I just think that maybe the gimmick was lent into slightly too hard and I can understand why when people look at this and then they go well we're now moving into the cowboy set why people go did uh, Hasbro just looking through like a toy a toy set? Yeah, you've got like the wacky races set coming up as well going forward. It's like I get where they're coming from. With there, they've clearly thrown a concept at the wall and then they've hyper focused on it. And there are definitely sets where I think even this year we'll see a very different design push and a very different flavor kind of um, gravitas when we go to like Bloomborough or uh, Duskmorn because again they have to then build those planes up. And kind of give us integrity to rely on instead of going. Here's this set, this setting that already has a shit ton of integrity, a load of story and stuff that you care about. We can kind of do what we want within it. It's almost like a sandbox. Mm. And I kind of, I think, yeah, I, I agree that I don't think it's so egregious as people are making out to be. I just think that it's it's not as veiled as they might have wanted it to have been. And there are certain cards that may, I look at within the set and go. Oh, that's the Ravnica that I kind of wanted. <laughs> and it's only when I look at those cards, it makes me realize that the rest of the cards don't bring me that same joy. Yeah. And it's just, again, like there's a, a lo- there's a lack of almost evocation within the set. There are so many card arts where I look at it, it's just someone thinking in a blue kind of background or someone sat at a desk. I'm like, I wouldn't be able to tell you in a couple of years time what the fuck that card was for, because it's just person doing a thing a little bit. And again, I, I don't know if that job role kind of aspect, that more down to earth, that less magic feeling that less spells being cast more more you know evidence being taken is that less of a magic film i don't know um, again is it nice to see magic as a, as, a, as a game mechanical thing kind of processing these different themes instead of it all being like zoo i make fire come out of my hand you know and i'm resurrecting a fucking dinosaur or whatever like fair enough cool I, I don't know where my i don't know where the line should be i just feel like yeah the line the line was definitely strong enough that people have decided to stand one side or the other but do, i mean you've but you mentioned it there i mean not to not to just keep disagreeing with you just to keep the discourse going because I, I completely see what you're saying but i do you think as you just said in that last little bit there we've we've had 25 years of zoom fire mage pew pow hmm. that is it time that we maybe have a couple of years of something a bit more specific that brings in new players that maybe thinks, yeah, this is what we're doing. Obviously, that's the idea of jumping around plane to plane, block to block. But if, but if every plane is just, these are what wizards would look like if they were slightly cave-like. This is what wizards would look like if they lived in a jungle. And this is like, mm. now it's like, well, okay, what would wizards look like if they were fucking detectives? Sure. What would wizards look like if they were cowboys? That's just a slightly different lens. Yeah, I mean, people eventually got over the finger gun thing of uh, Nuka Panerai. In fact, if anything, it was quite... Do you know what I mean? It was quite, quite charming. It, yeah. yeah, and I think maybe that's the thing is where I think that maybe the charm of this just isn't quite as... It's not quite as on point, maybe. Maybe the charm maybe doesn't carry as much. Maybe there is a little less of that charm, that, that tongue-in-cheek aspect. I don't know. Maybe there's a few too many... Again, like naming conventions that are a bit too my like literally just not on my watch being one, or they went this way as a card name. I'm like that 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 you know that yes. it feels a little less arcane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I feel like again, I'm not saying yay or nay because I'm I'm actually quite open to seeing I, again if the set's built to be a really cool limited environment, and that's why all the mechanics are the mechanics that they are. I'm not going to get pissy that I don't have more cards to add to my commander decks because ultimately I don't need to free up. I don't need more reason to have to free up space in my decks. Sure. So well, I, interestingly, is that, that something yeah. that people are butthurt about? You know, if they're looking at the set and going, "Oh, well, in the wider range of magic, this doesn't really work." It's like, well, to stop looking at it in the wider range. Start looking at it in the microcosm of it's just a set to be played kind of as it is by itself. I think it really benefits from being one set. Could you imagine this being a block? Right. Again, would they then have more time to show the? This is all the detective side of things, and then this is the non-detective side of things. Because I think the most of the set is broken down into either your people trying to find out the, the crimes, or you're either the people that are part of the crimes. Yeah, yeah. And there's mo- only maybe like maybe 10-15% of the set that sits outside of either of those things and doesn't really care about it at all, and it's just further ancillary Ravnica stuff. 
I think the bigger I think the bigger difficulty with this set, if we if we start looking a bit more closer into it, is that for me this is a set that has a really strong story overall in a bubble. So as you say, it's going all in on these are the detectives, these are the people they're detecting. Be that the criminals or the you know the witnesses, whatever it is. My problem with this set is I think some of the really interesting stories that the cards are trying to tell, I don't know if they're telling it correctly, mm. and I don't know if that's because... I, so here's, right, here's an example of a card. Okay, I'll, I'll, right, give you, yeah. I'll give you an example. Let's actually talk about some flavour picks. Exactly. Right? Yes, well, yeah, yeah. So let's not talk nobody, let's talk specifically. 20 minutes in, here we go. <clears throat> Cold Case Cracker. A three and a blue for a spirit detective, a three three. None of that matters for the flavour of this card. Spirit Detective. Flying. When Cold Case Cracker dies, investigate. The flavour text is, it's a rare privilege to investigate one's own death. So this is a ghost who's detecting their own death, which in the sort of uh, language of fantasy, there's this idea that ghosts are born of like unfinished business. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm reading this card. Mm-hmm. But the... So it... But, but... If you zoom out, <laughs> if you zoom out, this card read to me like, okay, so when it dies, it it gets a clue, or is it is it trying to say that once it invest once it cracks the clue, then it's able to die or go to rest, or is it that it's the the previously living person dies, it gets a clue, like which way round does it yeah, go? Exactly. Because this creature, when it dies, gets the clue. But is is it just because that's the constraint of the limited environment that is trying to write? This is just how it's going to have to work play wise. Mm. And is the larger story that it's telling? Oh, when this, you know, when it solves the clue, when it cracks the clue, which is, you know, even cracking a clue is very satisfying because you crack things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, magic. You're discovering knowledge by, yeah, like, yeah, 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 by making sense of the thing that's in front. And of it, you. it fits within magic slang. I yeah. really like it. And with obviously clues were introduced all the way back in Shadows over in Estrad, right? Um, so but yeah, what... another another very investigative. There's a case to solve kind of yeah, set. Yeah, but yeah. again, in that one, the case was the backdrop to everything else that was going that's on the true. train instead of being the because, other way But around. that's because it was woven into a large narrative. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, what what does this card mean? <laughs> well, so the thing I ha- this is exactly the issue I have, and this is probably why I have an issue with it as a wider thing is because what you've got there is you've got the the card the the, the low drop creature that does the set mechanic when it dies, mm. and the problem with when you're doing a, oh, we're doing a murder mystery set, is that, right, so we're just going to print all of the same, say, let's say, 25 staples we put in every limited environment, the artifact destruction, the um, the giving an anthem to all of your creatures, the giving a hex proof to one of your creatures, the, all of those kinds of effects that you need to be in every limited environment, and then just go, cool, but now we're going to add, but you investigate on it, or, but you also... Um, disguise, which mm. is one of the mechanics. We'll get to the mechanics in just a second. This, yeah. The whole point of this, I think, the problem is that once you have so many sets back to back of where they're doing these very tight, very specific um, mechanics that haven't been seen before, or they're twisting an old one, but they have to redo it all for every one of the staples because it's the new mechanic. It starts to feel a bit very tired because you start looking at each card and going, "Yeah, okay, cool. It's only a common. I really shouldn't be annoyed about the fact that it's just the. It's just oh, we can just slap this effect onto it, and then we know we've we've ticked that box for the set. Mm-hmm. But if you do have that as like as you know twenty to thirty percent of the real estate of your set, it does mean that twenty to thirty percent of your real estate does just become a roll of the eyes. And again, as you say, how much did they focus on the flavor of that to be like? I mean, again, not to nitpick your nitpick per se. But for them, they might have thought they were very clever going, oh, yeah, but, you know, when the thing dies, then they know that the, the, the killer probably didn't realise that the spirit's just going to come back and go like, well, I was in here doing this. Who's likely to want to attack me and kill me? And that's the clue, because why would I be the subject of the murder? Yeah. I, yeah. But the fact it causes confusion for, on a simple design is maybe even even worse if they're like, almost like mishandling. I mean, again, is it just funny for them to make the pun of, oh, I get to investigate my own murder. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's something that can happen on but Ravnica. That, yeah, yeah. I just think, I just think the micro stories of the cards... Are maybe just, just the the one mm. wrong way round. Well, so why is it blue? Why isn't it in white? The yours of colours of ghosts coming back. Well, we don't really get many blue spirits typically. The Azorius, the Azorius have spirits. Not as much though. Not 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 to the degree. And I know this could be, but this doesn't look like an Azorius. Well, no, because they're all spirit they're all because guildless, it's right? all guildless. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, again, I, again, make I guess it makes sense. It's fair enough. What, what kind, kind, kind of whatever. But again, this is where when you blur the thing that makes Ravnica Ravnica of having this kind of guild affiliation, it makes the individual flavour of cards, as you say, a little bit harder to try and kind of go, yeah, that kind of works. Are you just trying to be 
funny. And again, the name, Cold Case Cracker. It's but like, I, I, I they think... They want the alliteration, I and it rolls off the tongue. That's, that is... Yeah, that's a good name for a magic card. Mm. They went this way is not a good name for a magic yeah. card. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like there's a lot... That This is where I feel like the set, again, has enough of the... Oh, yeah, well, look at this bad example that kind of, unfortunately, kind of almost maybe smothers the, the good example. Uh, we touched on mechanics. Let's get mechanics. Yeah, let's get it into mechanics because there's one. There's some that I think are great, and some that I'm just like I've no fucking. I don't, well, no, I don't know. The way I look at it is that we're basically just in. We're in rivals of uh, rivals of Ix, um, rival. I don't know why I keep saying rivals. Lost caverns. Lost caverns of Ixalan. Of Ixalan. We're in it. We're in it basically again. Um, but I, this is clearly the way they're going. Though. Yeah. Let's take let's take mechanics that we've had before that we that maybe didn't work so well, or let's tweak them to be specifically. Again, let's keyword something that makes sense linguistically and thematically within the set, but essentially is just a rehash of another magic of, of another magic uh, mechanic. And fair enough. Again, we're thirty years into the game; it's hard to be ridiculously innovative with every single set without it feeling like everything's super convoluted. The problem I have with this set is that things feel convoluted whilst just retreading old ground. And we'll we'll get into it. The first and foremost being the fact that. We've had Morph, we had Mega Morph, we had Manifest, now we've got Disguise and Cloak. And Cloak. Biggest bugbear. The, the, so Disguise is when you exile something from your own deck face down, and Cloaking is doing it from your opponent's face down, right? And they become a 2-2 two, two face down creature. With Ward 2. So oh, essentially, it's essentially the same as, as, as Morph, but it gives you a little bit more utility. And Manifest. And Manifest, exactly. Yeah. Manifesting happens specifically from the top of your library. Now, disguising is from your hand, cloaking is from the top of your library. Again, they changed the names because it fits better with the set, and it would have made sense to call it morphing and and manifesting. Even though I don't think it's that much of a push, I, I think, think it would have been fine. Been, I think it would have been fine. I think it would have been fine. But again, if you want to add the war two to make the creature then more relevant, because maybe they had feedback of where the morph, like I think Khans of Tarkir, by the way, was one of one of the better limited environments. People fucking love playing it, and that had a lot of morph going on, and people didn't really have a big issue with it. It does make most of your games descend into most of the games and most of the limited games are going to be revolving around 2-2s. Two um, you can't make a 3-2 unless it's got first strike good because it's going to be blocked by most it's of the creatures die, in the format. Yeah. You had this thing of where you're tied into every single flip cost or you're turn, turning face up, undisguising, whatever you want to call it. When you have to make that cost so exp- a, a, a bit prohibitive to know that at 5 mana, that's, that's when things start getting weird when you flip them up. For anything less than 5 mana, you're never going to lose out on a trade. They have all these ways of balancing the limited format to make the set play well, but then from a, I'm just going to look at a random set of Magic the Gathering, mm. does it look good, does it excite me? Not, not really, not from a flavour point of view, because I don't see how these mechanics are diverse enough from the things we've already, re- we've already had. If anything, Disguise and Cloak makes more sense, but you've already done more. How would you feel if... They started a little bit like how they've rolled back on things. There's not as many planeswalkers in the set. So that's a design choice that mm. they've made. They've changed the way that we do block structure. That's a design choice they've made that affects how uh, things like Friday Night Magic pans out and standard sets pan out. How would you feel if they got to a certain point and they said, look, we are Wizards of the Coast. We are the greatest game designers in the world. We are running this well a bit dry. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to almost like chaos drafting, but professionally done we're going to make one new mechanic per set mm. and then we're going to bring other ones in to create new play environments no two game mechanic will ever be in the same set mm. so if you had you know manifest in one set with another thing they would never have manifest with that same one in another mm. set so they brought back in manifest for this set how would you feel i would think so i think if it works within the environment i think we've we've proven that overcomplicating a magic set is dangerous. Time Spiral, Plane Chase, Future Sight was a block that was very alienating to new players because it was a love letter to older players. People that had been playing for 20 years had been had knew all of the mechanics and maybe even were being reminded of some of the mechanics. Maybe they took a couple of years off and, oh shit, I get to play with a card that has Ripple. I've never played a card that has Ripple before. And they've had feedback of where they say, because obviously everything feels disjointed, it doesn't it doesn't pass as easily. Mm. And what you're describing is can we just take some older mechanics, add them into the current the, the new thing we kinda of want to do, and we've got all of this utility that's already kind of almost like how we build a commander deck, right? Of where we go, Hey, I really want to build a plus a, a counters deck. And there's all these different ways of make, of, of of getting counters on things. There's mentor, there's evolve, there's blood not bloodthirst, is it bloodthirst? I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's loads of different ways to put counters on things. Can yeah. we just shove those all into a, into a, a into a set? Could they have done that, for example, if we focused and say did a a simic a simic set 
And instead of just having mute, oh, I mean, I've just said, thought of mutate as well. But instead of just having evolve, you have all of these other different ways of adding, adding counters on, and that's the ancillary flavor that you're adding into it. Is that how do the other mechanics then fit within this set? Instead of how do we make a, mecha- a set that has three mechanics that fit flavorfully, and then spread all the mechanics across those? I think I think it works. I think I don't think it's so bad. Um, we said this when we had Rivals, uh, again, did it again, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, where we had the adventure card for Canon, mm. and we've had an adventure card also now. Yeah. And I guess that's his thing as he goes through the sets. But again, if you're not following the story, you look at this random Canon card that's got this weird different border and it has a second, like, and it's the only card in the set that does it, and they've been willing to do it two, two sets in a row. So they're very willing to do this if the gimmick is flavorful. Yeah. So all you've got to do at that point is just make sure when you're doing it, it's flavorful mm-hmm. and no one's going to deny it. I think that they've had multiple cards in this set that had battalion and they didn't put battalion on it. Why? Because no one liked battalion. Doesn't matter, just keyword it. You've already put the plate the, when the when it attacks with two or more other creatures, that's battalion. Mm. So just keyword it. And the same thing with landfall. If it says whenever a land is like, oh yeah, but it's not a landfall set, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You've just made a landfall card. Mm-hmm. Just put landfall on it. And then, if anything, the next time that person picks up and goes, oh, there's no other landfall cards in this set. I wonder if there are other landfall cards in Magic the Gathering. Yeah. And then they look that up, and then boom, suddenly you've got all of the landfall cards. So I think retrospectively keywording, or keeping retrospective keywords in the set is absolutely something they should do. And then, yeah, picking up random, this, we just need this one card, even if it's got a weird mechanic. If the flavor works for the set, I don't see why you shouldn't do that. Well said, I agree. I just think, I, I, so So moving from Disguise and Cloak being a combination of Morph and Manifest, we then go to uh, Collect Evidence, mm-hmm. which is already wordy. I have a thing that if a mechanic has more than one word, it better be really evocative. Otherwise, why haven't you just made it into one word? Because mm. do you know what the word that they could have used here is? Delve. Do you know why? <laughs> because Delve is already a fucking mechanic, Andy man. And guess what? It's the exact same mechanic, Andy man. Except for this time, we have to specifically say collect evidence and a number, and you have to do a mana. Co- um, you have to exile up to or above that collective mana cost. And so, yes, that could be one card that costs four mana if it's collect four. It could be two things that have two mana value, or it could be four things that have one mana value, or it could be one thing that has six mana value and just lost out on your your collect evidence equity by two. What a shame. So we've got delve manifest. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Investigate. Uh, well, no. So like, is this just target? Because there's three mechanics. You know what I mean? Exactly the same. It's almost as if these mechanics work really well together. I mean, I think that, I think that is probably just luck of the draw. But again, why isn't this just delve? And I don't think delve again ma- mechanically doesn't syn- synergize with detecting. Mm-hmm. Why does it have to be collect evidence? Why are you taking it from your graveyard? Should you collect evidence for what's active, not what's already got? And again, mm-hmm. I could ar- you could argue the exact same thing in the other direction. What I mean is, in there's no reason to say that you couldn't have had delve in in there, and it just be fine. And again, maybe they wanted it to be different enough that they felt like they were innovating. I don't think there was I don't think there was enough depth made for the mechanic of collect evidence for them to specifically say that, well actually we want this card to be delve two mana value instead of delve two cards because that actually makes more sense mechanically. Or the playback works I th- better. Think, I think the Mel and the Vorthos could have been met there because they could because digging into like bins and rummaging rummaging through like, you know, so a suspect's bins to find nice. an address and blah, Why blah, isn't blah. that a card that's in the set actually? But, but there's lo- <laughs> they could have done the word delve, as you say, mm. could have been fine because they could have done a lot of them because the idea is that you're rummaging in the shit that's been discarded away. So you're mm. rummaging in your graveyard. But Ravnican wise, you could have had literal like grave digger type detectives that were doing that. Mm. Delving into like a book, someone's like looking through old like right. books and times. Exactly. They could have really they could have done it and it would have made perfectly perfect sense. So why do they have to again re keywords and again it sounds when you read it on the card it sounds clunky it's, it's like when we did craft where we talked about craft once you grok it it's fine and it works and it makes sense some of the cards better than others collect evidence similarly it's grokable and it makes sense but it is it's wordy and it's unnecessarily wordy and it and it creates i mean you see it's chunky word texting again it's something that delve is a really succinct uh, ability and it doesn't take that much text to make it work so why did you make a wordier version of it just to feel more convoluted and then also have less things that then synergize with if they ever make a Delve Commander, for example. Now you've not got all of these other cards that would have been possible to go in the deck. So it's dilution in my mind for no reason. When you've already got the mechanic there, just reuse the mechanic in a different way. You've already done it once before. It doesn't matter. And it's also like, hey, Delve's back. You know, all these people that love Delve, carry on. Instead, it's like, hey, you've got this new ability called Collect Evidence that's kind of like Delve, but it's not Delve, and it has very annoying specific specificities, even though it really shouldn't, and it's extra wordy, because why not? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what the justification for it is. I'm sure there's one out there, but ah, whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't love this direction that they're going with mechanics. If I can't 
as someone who plays Magic the Gathering, if I can't rattle off the mechanics, or here, no, here's here's a better way to describe it because actually Ravnica famously having ten guilds always has ten fucking yeah. mechanics. If I can't by the name of it go, oh that's the attacking mechanic, or oh no that's this mechanic. Battalion, I know that's the Boris mechanic. Yeah. Sure, detain, that's the Azorius mechanic. I don't even know 100% what it does, even off the top of my head. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I know what it's for. Mm. I don't know what any of these mechanics are for. Yeah. And that's the problem, right? Because the idea of Ravnica is that the guilds gave identity specifically. Like Unleash, you know, or... Oh, I've forgotten the other one. What was the, what was the one where you, if you, they were dealt damage? Was it... Oh... Can't remember. Oh, God, I've undermined my own point. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but again, if you don't have if you don't have them that tie specifically, again, because collect evidence could be in any color, which works. Again, I guess I, 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 it, I'm getting the same ripples that I got during Gatewatch of where I was like the un the ungilded. As much as it's kind of interesting from a story point of view to see the people that are unaffiliated from a mechanical point of view. It's actually really boring. Gate crash, do you mean? Gate crash, yeah, the gateless, you know, the the the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the yeah, exactly. And they kind of worked. And they did their own gates mechanic, so it kind of worked. It was fine. Um, Another repeating mechanic, investigate. Obviously, we've kind of already spoken about well, this. Well, yeah. So, but can I can I just touch on investigate? Please, clues, yeah, actually, because yeah, yeah. this is the thing. Conversely, to my little whinge about how um, cold case cracker, as much as having like on, in a zip by glance, having like a really interesting story, when you dig down into it, it gets a bit confused. The thing I really appreciate about this set, and the thing that I actually like, oh fuck yeah, sick, is that they've managed. To, the clues are the main one, right? All the other ones are just like, hey, here are the new mechanics, blah 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 blah. This is the clue set. The Clue is the... Again, it's the game that they're mm-hmm. selling because it's not called Cluedo in America. It's called no, it's Clue. It's called Clue, yeah. So it's the Clue mechanic for the Clue-adjacent set and it's Clue, 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 Clue. And since Shadows Over in Estrad and Eldritch Moon, people have been like, bring that fucking mechanic back. It's mm. been, you know... We've what? done enough treasures. Yeah. Blood was a bit pants. Yeah. We've done food and we've done map. Let's get back to Clues again. So here's what I really appreciate about, appreciate about it. Uh, there are 38 cards of the word investigate written on them in the set. There are, unless I've used Scryfall wrong, I think there's only six cards which actually have the word clue. So, like, when you sacrifice a yeah, clue. Yeah, so in the actual text box. Which, yeah. is, which is interesting, because you'd think there'd be more payoffs for having clues specifically. We're going to come back to that point in just a moment. Okay, cool. Uh, but the Investigate cards, what I appreciate about it is that I have a clue deck, an EDH mm-hmm. deck, that I made well again in Hargild, the... Um, Stranger Things universes within cards, Will and right? Dustin, I believe they are. Couldn't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. We've had this. We've had this exact conversation on the pod before. Um, it's an Azorius, uh, Azorius deck. It's an Esper deck. Now, really, what the deck is? It's a Flicker artifact token deck. The fact that it's clues is based off the fact that Wernog makes clues, and a lot of the interesting cards within Esper that have enter the battlefield abilities generally make clues in those colors. It does have a bit of food. It does have a bit of treasure, obviously, as well. So. It's not a dedicated clue deck. All the win cons are based off of things like, you know, it's Tesseract Master of the Bridge, it's Mechanized Production, uh, Rise and Shine, Cyber Drive Awakener, blah, 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 blah. So it could be any any artifact token. I've gone all in on clues. This deck, uh, this deck, this set, in, I was worried when it was going to be, oh, hey, here's the new clue set. I was worried that my sort of deck that I'd kind of, you know, rather cleverly put together. The Pippa effect. Made, I had a Pippa deck. So I, this is, yeah, it's right. I had a Pippa deck that was all rolling dice and then the first Dungeon Dragon set came out. It, and made, I was di- like, it made dice rolling the, sh- the, the dankest shit in the it world. Just, it, just, it just made my shitty little deck obsolete. Yeah, the, my, instead of making six sixes, maybe you're now making 15 15s yeah. or 20 20s. It just meant yeah. that all the cards that I put into it, I just needed to swap out for better versions. Yeah. And it wasn't my deck anymore. Yeah. And I was kind of worried that was what was going to happen here. It becomes more net decky when, hey, here's a bunch more yeah. clue synergy. Why aren't you playing Great for it? someone who's never played that mechanic before, but I'd already tried to think about it. Mm. So I wanted to feel clever. What this set has done is it's gotten so wide with the clue thing that actually, whilst I have a shit ton of cards I've put in, I think six overall, which mm. is quite a lot from, one, from set, one set, yeah. in three colours. In one deck. In one six deck. Cards, yeah. So obviously a big chunk. Though arguably, as you're about to say, it could have been, and probably would have you would have expected it to have been, many more cards Way more. that you'd have been like, oh, I'm deliberately not putting this in the deck. And also, a lot of the cards I'm putting in, I'm putting in because the cards I'm taking out are ones that just naturally are gone. Um, like, for example, M- Mere Battlesphere. Hmm. It doesn't really do what I want the deck to do. No. It, it's just taking a bunch of artifact tokens. Yeah, but it, it's for itself. It's yeah. not really for anything else. Mm. So my point is being is that the clue mechanics in this set, and indeed the investigate ones, 
they've really gone wide. So you look at Alquist Proft, for example. Alquist Proft, Master Sleuth. He's well, one of the... I'm surprised, um, surprised it took this long to get to him. Oh, God. <laughs> Super sexy on the card art, bro. Thank you, Andreas uh, Zephyrtos. Um, vigilance, when Alquist Proft, Master Sleuth, enters the battlefield, investigate, standard. But then he's got a Sphinx's Rev effect. But with clue synergy. So mm. X, white, blue, blue. Tap, sacrifice a clue. That's the whole, whole cost. You draw X cards and you gain X life. Because he is such a good sleuth that when he can get one clue and get all of this value out of it. But mm. then the Sphinx's Rev effect ties into other Ravnica sets. Because he's also been Nazurius, probably that Sphinx's Rev. I, I think that Azor probably donated that kind of knowledge and thinking. Kind of like how Niv-Mizzet works with the Firemind. Mm-hmm. He almost inspires revelation. Because mm-hmm. th- he's probably diffused that knowledge throughout the Azorius somehow through the guild pack. Absolutely. If we just jump... I mean, I'm literally going to just jump to another random card. Mm. Detective Satchel, which is two... I really like that card. Two red and a blue. So different colours, right? This is obviously like an is it version of what's going on. Because they're, they're all guildless, but they're all ex-guild members. Yeah, right? yeah. So Artifact, when Detective Satchel enters the battlefield, investigate twice. So obviously you're getting clues and shit, mm. right? Tap, create... Uh, tap is the cost. Create a 1-1 one, one color stop to Artifact token with flying activate only if you've sacrificed sacrificed an artifact this turn so it's it's a completely different thing it's if you've used a clue if you're on the case mm. you're solving clues you've got this little drone that kind of comes and yeah. helps you you're an is you're an ex is it guild member mm. okay i found this clue excellent wonder drone activate like mm. you know it's and just i mean just fucking jump to another one that is, is next to me here because of for the purposes of it is going in my deck and we're going to talk about its frame later persuasive interrogators which is the gorgon detective card when pervasive uh, persuasive interrogators enter battlefield investigate Fair enough. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, target opponent gets two poison counters. Mm. Completely different mechanic. Mm. But it works because it's two Gorgons that they get the information, and then because they're fucking Gorgons, they poison you up. They give mm. you a little jab jab with yeah, their exactly. little badge. Yeah. So that you've got three... Or maybe the closer you get to the evidence, the more that they're going to hurt and the more that you Yeah, or like it works the other way. A little bit like that cold, uh, cold case cracker. It kind of it goes both ways, mm. right? So these are three completely different colours, three completely different cards in terms of card type, colour, the lot, but they're all using clues in completely different ways. Mm. And for me, that is an absolute home run for mm. a single set release. Yeah, for sure. And again, this is something in the most interesting mechanic we've talked about so far is one that hasn't been repurposed. It's one that hasn't been invented with a new swing. Yeah. It's that we're just going, we're going to take the thing we've already got and we're going to broaden it. Who'd have thought, who would have called in a million years that poison was going to be, poison encounters were going to be in the set? And then it works. It just makes sense. So that, that card's going to be going into my yeah, one of the I'm, I'm, deck. I'm concerned already. As a win con. Yeah. <laughs> but it, obviously it relates directly to clues. So actually I do have to pivot into the clues a little bit harder. Yeah, I mean, at that point you can then, I mean, I guess the other reason why this is good for that deck is that you can then go, these other cards that were just synergistic with a flicker effect, Instead of making the deck more about what can I synergize flicker wise, I've now got enough options that I can go. Okay, well, how more? How how more can I synergize on the clue side of things? Yeah, exactly. Instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, it's a weird little deck that shouldn't really work because it has got it's got like an E B and C track. Into the perfect commander decks. I've, as someone who's built sidetrack very quickly, as someone who and I moaned about this and we spoke about this recently on a on a on a on a cast. As someone who's built a lot of decks recently, and a couple of them have been, I want to do this one thing very specifically. Those are a lot less interesting and feel a lot less like your own personal homebrew than the decks that go, I'm kind of doing this thing in these colours, but because of what the deck, because of what that thing does, it can also go in that direction or that direction or that direction. Those are the decks that, when you sit down and play with them, each time you find new synergies because yeah. you're playing into different options without realising how those options might overlap. Instead of going, okay, I'm trying to do this one combo. If I don't draw the, if I don't draw enough cantrips, then I, and I fail. If I don't draw enough rituals, I fail. And if I don't draw that one payoff card, I fail. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot, a lot less um, engaging, I think, from a building and play point of view. Um, suspect. Suspect is the mm. only thing that feels truly, absolutely unique and, and new to the to the set. Um, and it's a keyword action that you apply to um, your own or opposing creatures, and it gives them uh, menace, um, but they can't block. Does this does this not give you decayed vibes? It's a li- it does right, yeah, exactly that kind of thing of where how do we add a qualifier to a creature that then just makes it feel that little bit more flavorful, mm. and it kind of forces you again into if it can't block. It should be attacking, and then you normally be like, "Oh, but attacking's bad." Mm. The thing about decay didn't matter is because you're making a two-two creature. Sometimes it was really undercosted making this two-two creature because it can't block. That's a nice drawback. So you can actually kind of make a two mana make two two twos, mm. which they didn't do, but you could have probably done that as make two mana make two two twos. When they attack, you sacrifice them. They can't block. Mm. That's four power of attacking for two mana. Yes, but it gives no 
answer back and you've got to weight it as to whether or not that's good enough in your deck or not. Similar thing here, if making a creature, give give, give it the, uh, the right creature menace and it's mm -hmm. unblockable, but they're not being able to block, again, forces this action and it kind of sets this idea that everyone's looking at this creature, you know, everyone's focused on it um, and it's got that extra bit of aggression. Because if you say that guy's a murderer... They haven't got the defense because at that point they're suspected anyway. They don't have the opportunity to defend themselves because they're already under suspect. But because they're coming at you, they've obviously got a little bit of... Well, I like, I like it as well as it could be also that they're like slipping through the crowd. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that, this, that makes sense. This is, a, this is a mechanic, and it's not even a proper mechanic because it's not like... <laughs> You know what I mean? It's in, it feels it's not even a proper mechanic. Well, the fact it's a keyword action rather than a keyword ability is the difference, right? You don't have suspect come right. up as a, as a keyword and then it's followed by a bunch of text. Is there, are there no cards? I haven't done the research. It's like obviously. goaded, but there's so there are no cards that say when this enters the battlefield it is suspected. There are, and there are also other creatures that when they come into play, if there are are, are any other suspected creatures, they're no longer suspected. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. So suspect. I don't know if I looked at this set. I don't know. Suspect if I've at this as a set. mechanic, I think, is the most interesting because it feels flavorful it's completely unique and it only make, makes a real difference in kind of combat scenarios which is kind of what this what limited is all about anyway and i really like it there's a couple there's a card we're going to come to actually fuck it we're doing flavor picks so let's, let's talk about the yeah, card this is the episode that's the whole point right <laughs> so let me get to him fucking genius little guy um we're oh, a surprise yeah. artist as well uh where's the are you about one? to talk about ah! It makes sense when I can find the fucking stuff. Oh, that's not what I'm talking about. The card that I think you were referencing to when you was uh, when absolving Lamasu. Lamasu. Also, enters the battlefield. Lamasu's or a Ravnica. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When it enters the battlefield, all suspected creatures are no longer suspected. Yes. So it's, it's so shady when it comes and everyone goes, everyone goes it's that one. Oh, it's him over there, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's exactly. kind of sick. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the artwork on it is like, the Lamas is like, what have I done? I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that it has the most. It feels like a really sad cow. It feels like it's an animal that shouldn't have that ability to emote that much. But God, did they make it happen! Now the one I've got is um, by Jesper Eisjing as well as well, which is fantastic. Um, frantic scapegoat. Frantic scapegoat. A one-one yeah. for a red. A one-one creature goat with haste. When it enters the battlefield, suspect it. So it has menace and it can't block, which means it's a nice little early aggro drop. And then whenever whenever one or more other creatures enter the battlefield under control. If, scape, if the frantic scapegoat is suspected, you may suspect the other creature instead. And it can also, yeah. it can suspect, if multiple creatures enter the battlefield at the same time, it can suspect all of them. Now, it kind of makes opposite sense of where you'd want all of your other creatures coming to play and it's still suspected to focus from it, but I like the idea that it can go in and kind of make a fuss of any situation and then you're focusing on that instead of the thing you should be focusing on. And the whole point is the goat isn't the thing in the first place. The goat didn't cause any kind of murder. It's just only being it's only being suspected because it's causing a ruckus anyway. You know, it's like those bull in the china shop situations or when like a random animal just gets out in the middle of a city and no, no matter what is happening, everyone will grind to a halt and focus on the animal causing a fucking fuss. And I love it. And it's the one of the better artworks, I think, in the set of this absolutely batshit crazy coat coming at the camera. It's it's great, I love it. And again, it's a suspect feels evocative. Cloak yeah. doesn't because it's a retread. And again, Disguise doesn't. And yeah. They could have maybe made another word. I, again, it, it makes sense for me that instead of doing this other thing, you're just layering on and any creature in the set can be a suspect. Mm. You know, that for me feels more mechanically, that feels more mechanically um, flavorful than, than, than doing collect evidence or suspect I, 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 or, um, do you, or Disguise. Do you find goats charming in the real world? I think no. I think they're grotesque. But in magic, they are they are some of the best. It's one, so, of, the like, best, one goat, of the best creature types goats ever. Goats are one of those things that people really love and are like, oh no, goats are they're so destructive cute. little bastards. I think I think they're hideous. I think it's the little leapy thing they do when they're kids that it's everyone that really eyes. likes. It's that eye. Well, all ovines have the side slit, the letterbox iris, don't they? What? So, I know. Is an ovine like a bovine? Yeah, you just take the bee off. Am I am I thirty three and I don't know what an ovine? Yeah, there's oviomancer in this in in magic where it turns creatures into goats. What's an ovine? Like Wait, sheep, what's... sheep or rams, and but why stuff. are they not? What what makes them an over? What's well, a... not not being a sheep, not being a cow. What's a oh my? What's a bovine? So bovines are yaks, uh, buffalo, yeah, but cows. Sure. But we're mammals because we've got mammaries. Yeah, I mean, so do, yeah, but it's like a derivative. It's like bov do bovines have. B no, no, the whole is. I guess, I guess, at some point, like, I don't know what a bovine. I is. guess at some point, the livestock. Because think about it, but the difference between like a cow and a sheep really is size and wooliness. <laughs> Okay, I know B and just came out of your nose then, but also like you can't you, say that when I take a swig. Well, because you milk both of them, you eat both of them. They both have similar processes of what you know, like everything about them is kind of similar, apart from their. So I'm sure there's actual other bio, like you know, biological differences. I'm not a fucking you know anth anthropologist, but you know, 
Yeah. Is that what anthropology is? The study of humans. Is that? Is that? I thought it was animals. Let's move Addy on. Man. Let's move on. I'm <laughs> right, showing cool. my whole ass. So here. something else to get really, really angry about. Actually, we're, we're quickly since we had a little mention of you talked about clues to pay off and how many clue effects there were in the set. Yeah. How many yeah, payoffs yeah, yeah, yeah. there were. Let's quickly drive by on a detective, shall we? Uh, As a creature, I know we're going to get there eventually. It was the elephant in the fucking room. I've kind of, I've, yeah. I've, I've come off of it, ish. You've, you've been, I've been waking up to the sound <laughs> in my brain of you screaming this word at me, oh, well, over and over again, dude. It's so annoying. And what's really funny is this pers- persuasive in- in- interrogators. Yeah. Uh, the the Gorgon uh, detective that we'd spoken about before, of where in the regular artwork they don't have a fedora because mm. how would they wear it? Would they put it on their re- regular heads or would the little snakes have them? But the, the Gorgons on Ravnica don't have snake heads on mm-hmm. the end of their tendrils, in which I'm kind of annoyed about because I would have liked to have seen tiny little fedoras. No. In the in the dossier treatment, oh my god, do they have do they have fedoras on? And for 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 humanoid creatures that have a tentacly like wreath on their heads how they can wear hats ever yeah but Tyler Walpole's flim flammed this yeah because he's put them in shadow I know so you can't really tell. <laughs> you and also, can't tell and then also it kind of got pointed out to me could you imagine how cool it is to have a Gorgon's tentacle lift the hat off and greet you <laughs> while you well, yeah, so the hands are still in the pocket <laughs> and the Gorgon like tips its hat to you while the hands are still in the pocket now that is fucking killer I so, love it so let me get this straight the, the fedoras <laughs> are uh, too far but as long as they comedically <laughs> pulled it off as long as there's a cool way for it so same with Ezrin right if if the mount reaches up and, and tips the hat from 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 the rider I feel like it's slightly more forgivable but I'm still pretty pissed well, what's, about what's, it what's your problem with detective so how many creatures are in the set Andy man I'll tell you 142 <laughs> how many detectives are there in the history of magic Andy I'll tell you there are 70 <laughs> Out of those 70 detectives, how many of them are in this set proper? I'll tell you, there are 52. Out of 142, how many are 52? 36% of the creatures in the set are detectives, Andy. It's the detectives. 36% of it's the, the set. It's the detectives. I would Nathan. like to, I didn't have time to, but I'm going to, I will at some point, maybe, I'm, I've already bitten off more than I can chew in saying just that. There, I don't think there's been a greater waiting to a single creature type in a set since they erratted Phyrexians. Uh, werewolf? And vampire. I can guarantee you now there are probably not 36% vampires even in Crimson Vow. Uh, ally in Zendikar. Ally doesn't count because it's shapeshifter reshifted. What do you the fuck do you mean that doesn't count? It doesn't count because they just slapped on everything to make the, to make the set oh, work in the same way they put changing into lore into make classes. Um, it's dinosaur. Forced. It's forced, Andy. All right, all it's right. forced. And I'm sorry, it gets to a point of where if 36% of the creatures in your set are detectives, there shouldn't be any cases to fucking solve anymore, Andy, man. Well, it's Ravnica, man. Yes, but Ravnica is a set where in murders were never a thing before that everyone Maybe really these are about. all the detectives. If they are, that's still too many. <laughs> 36 is too many. The, anyway. the amount of crime that goes on in just the 10th district alone. There's 10 districts, don't oh, you think? It baffles me. It baffles me. Again, it's the point of... Ra- there was, there's murder for show. And yet somehow now they decided Raven- like the, the detectives are important. The Rakdos should all be arrested, surely. Well, that is that's very much the opinion of the Boris Legion. Yeah, yes. Shut up. <laughs> Stop it. You fucking. Well, they don't even. They, but they don't even want. To, they don't even want to be affiliated with the detectives because they think the detectives are fucking everything. Up. Oh, you de- fucking cop. The very, the very denizens. The very denizens of the place well, say we don't fuck need this off shit. To okay. your fucking angel master. Right. Well, whilst the clowns and demons. Though. I do, I do and love fucking her. Aurelius, Aurelius Bay. Um, okay. Right. Last thing. Very quickly. Another thing to get really angry about. Um, so we've had sagas, we've had classes. Why not just meet that in the middle and do cases, eh? Why not we have another vertical design, step by step, fucking enchantment type? Well, I'm not mad about it. Why are you mad about it? Because it's literally halfway between. And I guess the whole point is, well, it's not a saga and it's not a class, so it has to be a case. And again, I like the process. I like the mechanical process of where you have this thing that happens when it comes in when the case first starts. To solve the case, you have to fulfill this certain requirement, and then afterwards it has a payoff. Why doesn't it? Why isn't it just a normal enchantment? Okay. Why does it have to be a case? Counter counterpoint. Yeah. Level up. It, it's also just level. You know, no, 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 no. That's a. That's my point against it. <laughs> I'm not giving nice. you that as ammunition. That is ammunition. <laughs> if we have creatures that, when they attack, get a thing. When this creature attacks, it gets menace, blah, blah. Why can't we have creatures that when you pay into it, it gets bigger and better? It's just level do up that. for it's, sagas. Well, what about monstrosity? That's when you pay mana and it gets bigger. Well, quite. Well, but no, but mm. I'm, what I'm saying is is mm-hmm. that 
instead of sagas just triggering oh so you, oh you just get sagas they just trigger fucking magic on easy mode that's mm. what sagas are this you have to pay mana into so this is the thing I think is kind of funny right is that I, I agree wholeheartedly I am literally um, <laughs> uh, devil's advocating myself because I don't actually care and I think the cases are really really cool the thing that kind of aggravates me is that they keep boxing themselves into corners by going let's make the saga a very specific thing and then if we want to flex on it we have to create read ahead otherwise it doesn't work because it's no longer a saga and we have to create this whole new mechanic yeah. to make it work then let's do classes but because classes are activated abilities that you go through we'll format it the same way because it's a progressive enchantment effect like sagas are we can't call them sagas because they're not and then this almost has the exact same feel as a class where it has this kind of effect at the beginning and you kind of have to pay in to get the second effect and you have to pay in again to get the third effect and I guess it's not quite the same because again you've got to fulfill a certain requirement and then you get the payoff and it keeps all of the abilities you never lose them do it's not like a saga that goes away they are different enough i get it but do you do you think because i understand i understand i do understand because it's sort of diluting something that was so pure and good and do do you think maybe we were just spoiled because the first few sets that sagas appeared in things like dominaria uh 2018 and kaldheim and all these sets because they fit as a narrative card that told stories of planes or went into planes where stories were the way the world worked. Mm. It was like you couldn't make a better format of a card for these. It was almost like giving it a mechanic in the form of a new card format. Yeah. Whereas it was like enchantments, but it was like enchantments had never been like this before. Yeah, like it was almost like it wasn't an enchantment. They could have just had Saga as a new card type been, and be like, was, yeah, sure. It actually read more like a planeswalker, right? Because it had that almost thing, yeah. ability of going, it has three different abilities. So my argue against, again, my counterpoint to, my, to, to, to me being annoyed about it, what are cases, if not very specific, stories about crime? In the same way, what is a class, if not a very specific story about someone's progression through their craft? Would you have preferred... Again, we're kind of going back to the well of why don't they just use things that exist but put a flavorful twist on them within the mechanic. Would you have preferred that all of the sagas in the set, and they were called sagas were defined by the fact that each page counter was only earned when you cracked a coin. Yeah, you had to, yeah, or like you had to go through, you could go through the chapters, but you could only go through the chapters by earning it instead of it naturally occurring. But then, but isn't, isn't, hmm, I suppose the, the reminder text on sagas is that it has, the saga yeah, has that's that the ability. Thing. The, the, this is what I mean, is they box themselves into a corner with sagas yeah. to the point of where they couldn't then make it work for a case, so they had to create a whole different thing. Also, the main reason I'm annoyed about it, and it isn't, it isn't because the diversity creates inconsistency, because again, I actually really like that. I also really liked, while we're touching on it, that each case had its own little um, Easter eggs within it. It goes without saying that this is the clue set, and I mean clue not just from the fact there are token clues, there are clues in all of the artworks, there are clues in flavour text, there are clues in everything. Mm. And I think that the individual cases all had different clues within them, different numbers and stuff. And I don't think we've even come to the full conclusion of what all the different um, puzzles within within all the different Easter eggs and everything actually are. I don't, I don't think I'll ever release it, but they may, might do one, do one day go, here, five years on from, Mark, uh, from, uh, from Murders on Carl of Manor. These are all the different puzzles that you didn't actually find the answer to. These are absolutely all of the Easter eggs we threw in there. You know, Fibblefit, for example, is in five different cards this set. Go and find him. Don't just look it up on the wiki like I did. Because um, <laughs> I thought it was only two, having gone through the main set. And a couple of them are a little bit harder to see, but it's five. I'm, I'm, I've spoiled it for you. Um, I, why don't other card types have this kind of diversity? Yeah, you've got normal enchantments. Yeah, you've got creature enchantments. You've got the... What was it, what was it called when you had um, from Theros... Bestow. Mm. Enchantments are probably one of, the, and I've said this again. I think I've, I've said this before. I say it again. Enchantments are probably the most interesting card type in the game because they don't. They're not stuck with the same thing that creatures are of where they're a permanent effect that needs to attack and block. They actually need to kind of justify themselves separately. Which means when they do design things more interesting for enchantments, they tend to have a little bit more mechanical integrity when they do diversify and make them unique and different. Mm. Um, again, I got annoyed about it, but actually I really like the top-down formatting on enchantments. I would love to see them still try and play around with more. Um, fantastic. That's all the mechanics. That's all, that's all the mechanics that are in the set. All, the, all, the, yeah. all of them. Everything. It only took us 30 minutes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Um, it's so, Watch. It is Kellen Watch. What's he up to this time? Oh, Does his artwork look any less weird in some of his iterations? Buddy, I like the fact that he looks different in each one. So we have a new Kellen. He's got a new colour! Oh, what a surprise! So we got original Kellen, that is to say Kellen the Fey Blooded, was uh, white-red with a white adventure spell. He was a red impulsive character who had a more who, yeah. had, a, who had a righteous quest to go on to go yeah. and find these things. Then yeah. we had Kellen Daring Traveller 
who was a white creature. More grounded, more noble, was trying to just do the cause and help out the people. With a green adventure. So maybe facing his his um, natural process of, 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 of wanting to explore further. I don't know, I'm reaching. Yeah, I mean, it created map tokens, whatever. So he was in different colours. Yeah. So he's gone from red-white to white-green, and now he's gone to green-blue. This time, interestingly, mm. he's dual colour on both his creature and the spell. Which might show he's got even more integrity now for now he knows who he is, how both sides of his card both have the same influence of, of, of different mana within it. But the same mana as Oko. Oh, exactly. It's funny how we, ca- it's ha- funny how we got, got eventually got there, isn't it? Well, do we reckon he's going to go into blue-black? Well, Oko has had got two cards. He has one where he's a three-mana... Little trickster, little format ruiner, and then he's got a five or six mana version that was in the plane, the planeswalker decks that came out with each set that they used to do, and he was soul tie in that in, in, in that iteration. Very interesting. So yes, probably. Uh, We're never probably going to get a red black version. Let's be honest. Maybe not. It was also interesting. I'm not going to read what the card does. It does stuff to investigate. Go figure. <laughs> he's Go a figure. Detective. He does investigate stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he has flying now. Well, again, and we even have a story spotlight card within the set on Fey Wings, I believe it is off the top of my head, of where it's the moment of where he discovers, oh shit, oh, so I can fly. But he doesn't do that in the story. Oh, he does. It's when he gets thrown out of the roof. Right oh, the you're end. right. I'm wrong. I'm very wrong. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. So um, did, I, you, did you also know Hex, Kellen's Companion, is a card in Arena? Did you know that they did a they did a um, a dog for... What's it called? Yeah, the, 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 I think they did the dog for... Zhang, Zhang oh, Yangu. Zhang Yangu. I, be, I believe they gave him Mo. Oh no, Mo was in. Mo, that we, 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 Mo's had a So cast. yes, yes, I did. I looked it up. Yeah. Did you also know that Aguerel from Ixalan, as in Aguerel's Bloodfast? Yes. Gets a fucking arena card. Okay, I didn't know that. Did you know that? I mean, this is a very, very random <laughs> one. But Crucius, one of the original fucking titans or whatever, um, on a Bolivar or whatever, is has has a card that's, that's and it's quite good and it's only on arena. Oh, fuck you, arena. You know, like. Arena's really ruining it a little bit for me because they keep doing this thing of where they keep making really interesting Teo cards, really interesting Davriel cards, really interesting fucking um, Devil Boy, fucking Twat Boy, what's his name? <laughs> Tybalt. Tybalt, thank you. A really cool Devil Man of... Crybaby, whatever that is. Yeah, Twat Boy. <laughs> so they made three different really cool Planeswalker cards for Planeswalkers we've only got one iteration of or maybe two in Tybalt's case that weren't very, very good and then they've made a really good version of it only for Arena. It's the worst. Have you seen Devil May and Cry Baby? It's an anime. No, but I've heard it's very good. It's very, very explicit, very quickly. Yeah, I, I think actually that's a lie. I've seen the beginning. It starts in a church and it's all slashy, slashy, isn't it? At the beginning, right? There's lots of bits being slashed yeah, around. Yeah, good. It's a very oddly toned anime and worse manga. Anyway, I just that's that's all for Kellen Watch. Yeah. Can't wait to see him in Blue Black and in Bastards of Thunder Junction. Well, speaking of people that are going from plane to plane through Omen Paths, uh, let's look at, uh, are these cards from this set or are they actually from an Omen Path set and they've not really explicitly done it and Omen Paths might not be as as, as important as we really hoped they were going to be. Tongue that, Tipster. What, that, that's a snappy name for a right, segment. Right, exactly. Basically, Omen Paths, are they a thing or not? <laughs> Because it doesn't feel like they are, apart from Kellen fucking around. Um, he says, with fuck, I've just ruined it. I've just lost it. I've lost my page. <gasps> no, no, no. Little mole dude, come back. There he is. Tunnel tipster. Oh, yeah. Mole scout. Doesn't really matter what he does. He taps for mana and he does a set mechanic thing with face down creatures. Um, he looks like he's from Bloomborough. He's got a little, he's got, he's got a little cape, his little cloak on. He looks like a little Red Riding Hood kind of thing. He looks cute as fuck. We've not got moles really in well, the set. Apart from Man's Rag, the yeah, god. Yeah, if you can have a mole god, can you not have a mole man? But the mole god has the weird little tentacly things, kind of like the the mole graph from Innistrad, where it has a tentacly nosy thing. It's got, yeah, well, it's, this one looks nose, way, yeah. way more cute. You want to take it home and give it a little nuzzle. Are you saying you wouldn't want to take it home? Give it I don't know, it's a little nosy thing. A little, little nose starfish. It's a bit much, yeah. It, why that noise? <laughs> why that noise? But it, it's absolutely appropriate, you know? Not, not a fan. Not a fan, but Tunnel Tipster, I think, is probably from Bloomborough. Probably a little plant to kind of see. Uh, it's hard to tell. Ravnica is really, really diverse. The other one that I think is really obvious, however, if we scroll down and go to... Ooh, Rift Burst Helion. You can quite literally see a Helion from... It looks like it's probably Chandelar or something. It looks like Crater well, Helion. R- Rift Burst. Do you know what I mean? It's coming through from another from another plane. Burst in that rift, baby. Oh, Yes. Um, and it still has disguise mechanic. Don't know why. It kind of works again. If you're going to have cards that are very clearly coming through from another Roman path, absolutely please don't just give it set mechanic. The tunnel tipster has 
something to do with face down creatures. I'd rather have got a little tip off to be that. Oh, that's what maybe one maybe one one of the mechanics in Blue Ooh, Barrow's could you be. do that? Could you do? Could they start doing that? Doing like one card with a mechanic. Should have been there. doing this already. Oh, Should have been doing that's it already. A good idea. Rift burst helion. Similarly, it's just a six seven with reach, and you disguise it and call cool, fine whatever. But it again, it's annoying that like any Ravnican denizen, it decided to visit Plaza West for lunch. But it says. So is it like any other Ravnican denizen, or is it saying that hey, not only Ravnican denizens go to go to the the, the, the marketplace on a Sunday, also this random Helion from Chandelar does as well? Is that the joke? I hope so, because if so, kind of funny. But also, why doesn't it have its own Chandelar mechanic? That's the whole fucking point, right? You know how you were saying earlier how can we not just do some cards from this random set, or can we not just do a mechanic from this random plane? I'm like, you'd think that with the Omen Pass, that's exactly what they were fucking going for, wouldn't you? But they're not. Do you reckon that's what they'll do? The wacky races thing. The wacky races set. They should be... be doing it all the time anyway. Yeah, I know. But do you reckon that's where they're going to go full? Like it's yeah. going to be vehicles crossover, and crossover, 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 crossover mechanics. We don't even know what plane this is from, kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe the Omen Pass become less and less stable, and then they have to fix it. But I feel like if this is the Omen Path arc, that would have been the focus of that arc. Do you reckon Chaos Drafting is so popular and the Mystery Boosters were so popular? They're like, fuck it, let's just make that. Let's story. just make it a set. <laughs> yeah. I kind of hope so because I do like it. I do like it. Um, oh, good. Right, we're at random, random nonsense now. Stuff. Um, Arc Druid's charm. Uh, green, green, green for a bunch of different modes on a charm. Oh yeah, this thing. Um, Mega cycle with oh, what's the uh, what was the blue one? Arc mages. Arc mages charm. So we're we gonna get Arc liches charm for the black one. Arc wizard. You know, for which of like who knows? Arc angels charm. Arc druid. Oh, wait, we had Arc druid. Arc, Arc demon. Arc monk. Yeah, exactly. Arc, Arc monk. Arc monk. You know, who knows? Maybe let's see when we get to the mega cycle. We've got two now. The blue one's pretty good. The green one's pretty fucking good. Goes and gets you with a creature or a land. Makes a fight thing happen. Or exiles an artifact or enchantment. All the good stuff for for green, green, green. Very, very good commander staple. Love it. Um, have you got any other flavor picks? Now we're into well, flavor picky stuffy. I, uh, it's not a bit. It's not a huge deep dive. I like the visual identity of the gruel gods. So yes, was it Anzrag? We've had Anzrag and we've had um, Boar Boy. Ilhag. Ilhag, so yeah. Anzrag the uh, Quake Mole has got all these green uh, tattoo-like things. Now... The runes, yeah. Now... Reminds me of Deus of Calamity from Lorwyn, actually. Yes, it does. The lore for the tattoos for the Gruul mm. is that which they brought in... I believe they brought it in during uh, Guilds of Ravnica, but I could be mistaken, is the idea that they are the districts of civilization that they've smashed up. They then get like the road map of it tattooed onto their body. It doesn't exist anymore except on me. Yeah, well yeah, because it's like, because they're all kind of asymmetrical. Except for this is where it falls down. The tattoos that Jace has from Origins we know are a gruel tattooist when he first bounced Ravnica. He got it tattooed. He got the collar of Alhamrit tattooed on mm. his face. So does that is that a gruel tattoo? It's Maybe sort of... that gruel person wasn't specific to... Like, there must be various different tattoos you can get. It's just that the average one we see is of that specifically. Sure. But I like... so. But they're all green and glowing. Sorry, that wasn't a dismissive sure. That was like, no, 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 green with you. Course. And then Ilhag has a similar aesthetic where he's got sort of markings on his body that are kind of, um, you know, right angles and a little bit asymmetrical and also has like a green glowy mane. So obviously they're the gruel colours because they're like red coded but with green bits. But I like the fact that they kind of exude green energy. Well, maybe they're also... If all of their gods do have these runic patterns, maybe that's where they went, right, so let's take mm-hmm. the runic patterns of our gods mm-hmm. and those are maybe their things that they've done in their lives and let me try and convert it to things that I've done in my life which mm-hmm. is destroy this district so let me combine their design with yeah. my history Ilarg Anzrag these are good names yeah I like the Gruul a lot I would like to do and again we're not going to do it because we've just hit Ravnica and we've talked about how it doesn't really work but I wouldn't mind doing some focus insets on specific guilds and they make the whole set about that guild I'd like to do a, a Selesnya Gruul one Mm-hmm. of where they can kind of go and maybe it's just I mean, again you can't really get away with it because you, you're waiting on the set doesn't work but it'd be nice to kind of deep dive a little bit more into the more natural culture of Ravnica for these for the for the what's the fallout going to be for the Selesnya mm. now that their fucking guild leader is like partially detained and tried to murderify like half of the fucking plane you know is there going to be fallout on that on how they feel like and also the connection to the world soul we've had more conversations about how Kai was interacting with it and kind of having a bit of back and forth with it like again can we can we deep dive more instead of just talking about whether or not someone's been murdered? I don't know I, I, I don't think it's likely to happen but yeah Gruul are interesting very cool they're not just smashy smashy the less smashy smashy we see the more interesting they become mm-hmm. you know Borborygmus isn't even in the set because we don't need to see him hitting more things um, 
yeah, in the story, they had a representative that was just trying to talk about freedom. Yeah, he wasn't even he wasn't even uncultured. He was just he just wanted to be free. I know. And you look at him as a car dark, this shaggy haired Merlin looking centaur, and you'd think probably quite uncultured. <laughs> yeah, turns out, turns out I'm just biased against centaurs. <laughs> yeah. who knew? You're just vain. Who knew? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so my random random card that just doesn't make any sense within the set really. Barb Servitor. Three and a black for an artifact creature construct. Um, it's just it's just spikes and chains with a rav- with a Rakdos signia as its flaming face. Um, it's an indestructible one one. When it enters battlefield, you suspect it. Which again, they're just putting random mechanic card on the on the card. I kind of like that because you look at it and you automatically think you've done a murder because mm. you're made out of knives. Yeah. so that makes you, sense. You probably did four murders coming to work. Today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, you accidentally have yeah. murdered a few people today already. Um, and then does some other things, you know, like if he does come and to a player, you draw a card, blah blah blah. It has to be blocked. None of that matters. What I like is it just feels very nebulously. Like it doesn't have anything to do with the crime set. It's just a Rakdos construct, and this is what the Rakdos do. They make weird kind of. But when they want to make something artificially, they make it out of jagged metal, and it's and it's super dangerous. I like that. That's just a bit of extra Rakdos flavor in the set that we otherwise wouldn't have had. That didn't have to be about crimes, or, or detectives. Kind of like it. That's it. It's fun. It's, it's it's interesting because that's the card I looked at, and I went, "You're nothing to do with the rest of the set." And I quite mm. like that. I like the drive five where you still get little nuggets of Remnica within the set that then make me lament when I look at random Sphinx that also is a, is a detective and has set mechanic on it. Should we go to artists? Can I also ask how Festileach is a 1-1? One, one? Have you seen the size of the Festileach? I mean, yeah, it's got a bird for scale, but it's consuming the bird with its maw, and it's got to be like a good five foot long, and it's only a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, but it's a leech. But it's a 1-1. A, a body-sized leech is definitely dealing you more than one damage. I guess if you've only got one toughness. As a human, if one is your toughness... And it takes one leech to kill you. That gets well, yeah, that makes why sense. is a soldier a 1 1? Yeah, no, no, let's not do this again. <laughs> Power and do toughness does again. not matter. No, I know. If I one know. is your lowest toughness. Yep. Do you know what I mean? I know. Um, okay, before we get into artists, I've put two. Well, I've got one more nitpick and then one more cool thing. My nitpick is <laughs> okay. assemble the players. It's a card that triggers off of creatures with power two or less, and every creature that's in the artwork has more than two power. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> like, literally every single creature in it has Judith, Aurelia, Trostani, mm. uh, Tolzomir. And I think, off the top of my head, Tolzomir isn't a 2-2 two, two that makes a 5-5. Five, five. It's a 3-3 three, three that makes a 5-5 five, five off the top of my head. Like, none of the creatures in the artwork so, uh, make any sense the, of the mechanic of the card. The mechanic triggers when a power of 2 or less comes in, and none of the players are small enough for that to work for. You <sighs> fucked it. You ruined yeah. it. And then, oh, we spoke about, um, where does the, where's the upside down mountain? And the smart goblins are from, where are they from? Oh, Marcadia. Marcadia, yeah. In this set, we've got um, a goblin uh, code breaker, which goblin rogue call that meaning bit that takes some cleverness to be a code breaker. And then you've also got a novelist. Yeah, crime novelist. Goblin bards, yeah. So goblins on Ravenica, actually pretty smart, pretty well, good. Yeah, Argu- I, know, I know, I'm just saying. No, I mean, Marcadia is definitely losing their crown when you've got a, no- a novelist. I think... I- a goblin novelist. I, the How goblin, yes. That? Okay, so the goblin novelist, yes. They could be schlocky because it's crime novels. It's pulp. But it's also he's a bard. I like the fact that actually he's writing stories and he's a bard because he's telling stories. That's it's also so it's also a very soft looking goblin in terms yeah. of the features. It's not very sort of like sharp. He, nose he looks like he's well kept. He looks like he'd be shunned by other goblins if he tried to walk into the goblin Look at his soft, limp wrist. Yeah, fucking. exactly. Gr- get a real job and build a thop to death yeah. ray why machine. Ha- why don't you go to hang out with... with- with, yeah. uh, with 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 Rao and Tomic, I mean, because they seem like kind of they're actually really nice guys. They yeah. seem like also, really Tom, Tomic in the set is beautiful. Have you seen the ultimate artwork for him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, both yeah. both artworks are yeah, great. Mm-hmm. We're thirsty today. <laughs> it's the lip smacking. I don't think I abide. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can't hear you licking lips. You know, it's easier for me to be heard. <laughs> my art, my artwork. artist for the set. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Is that I can say the most, like, I really want to fucking rail out Chris Proft. And people, I don't think it comes across anywhere near as grotty as when you just go, nim, 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 nim. I don't say the word, <laughs> I want to rail. No, but that's an example. But that's what I'm saying. I can be, like, really horny for, like, Beardy Boy. And as soon as you're like, this character, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just sound way skeezier than I do. Well, yeah, that's because I'm, a ske- I'm way skeezier than I'm you are. I'm a skeezy are. bro. I'm, I'm, I've less, digni- uh, less dignity than you do. And, and, and absolutely less shame. 
<laughs> I think, yeah, both of those are probably true. My artist for the set <laughs> uh, is Jeremy Wilson, artist for Airtight Alibi and Insidious Roots. Yes, Insidious Roots. Insidious Roots is the black green enchantment, and Airtight Alibi is the green aura. Um, both of which uh, have very strong color palettes, and so it's very two tone. I mean, well, technically three colors. I mean, yeah, they're both well. Airtight Alibi four. I take it all back. No, I, <laughs> but like the prominent colors in them are very two tone. And for this set, he used uh, prints. So you can see it definitely on Airtight Alibi, and I'm pretty sure he did it for uh, Insidious Roots as well. Where he used two or three different wood block yeah. prints to it reminds then... me of potatoes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's potato printing, right? But like, what I love about it is, this is this is why artists are artists, and I'm just a fucking idiot because I can make a wood block print. And I can go, nah, 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 nah. lovely shapes, do a circle, blah, 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 blah. Am I on a fucking magic card? No. no. Because I'm not Jeremy Wilson. Mm. Like, he can take something like, he can take a he's craft fucking that finger think, painting. You'd think it's really meant... See, this is funny, because as someone... So I, I did art in school, and I would I would refuse to use paintbrushes, because I found them to be a little bit too limiting. So I'd be the kind of person where I'm getting all various different things, putting paint on them, and then using them as paintbrushes yeah and i think the reason why it really why it pops and everything is because we're so used to now and i don't have anything wrong with art that's then digitally enhanced digital art or even art that's just you know regular it's just brush work stroke. Flow. it's just workflow i don't have any issue with any of it but it does start to when it becomes the prominent art form of the of, of, of the of the game it starts to become very wishy-washy samey samey even if the artwork is unbelievably beautiful it's easy for your eyes to glaze over when it's got that same kind of and i think this is really obvious in once we'll get to the treatments, we'll focus on it a little bit more. It's really obvious in one of the treatment artworks of where they just make everything a little bit too realistic. And so my eyes kind of, unless there's, unless it's in a foil or something like that, it just doesn't pop. Whereas these, it's a very different style to what the normal, as we like to call back all the way back in the day when we were talking to Borthos Mike, when we were talking about the, the, the target board. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Where, where on that target are you throwing the dart in terms of is it magic art or not? Yeah. And we've now got to a point of where a lot of magic artists in fact, it feels like even like half and half now are doing weird abstract things. Well, do you remember when like it was like the 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 wood carvings for some of those cow exactly? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, it's it's fucking brilliant. And like, I mean, as with all these podcasts, we talk about the artwork. Just look up Jeremy Wilson on Scryfall. Now, before you do, hold your horses. I see you there clicking away. Don't scroll down. What was the first set? Mm. Just te- I mean, you would not know. Take a. <laughs> Take a punt in the wild the last darkness. Last time you did this, I got it right. <laughs> you did. If so, if I was to tell you that he's got two cards in this set, he had a whole bunch of cards. In fact, most of his cards are from Dominaria United through to All Same Will Be artist, One. Yeah. Same artist. Right. So, so he, so he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, ten cards from Kamigawa yeah. through to March the Machines All right. Will Be One era. So he's that's prominent. So that he's was at, his first set before then, though. Well, uh, 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 so he's oh. got eighteen cards overall. Right. That's when he's like really fucking yeah. I'm in Magic the Gathering now. What was the first set he did a card in? So for that for that fewer cards, I'm not going to go too far back, and only because we've also recently mentioned it, and it's on it's been in the pod already. I'm going to go with Tarkir Block, Battle of Zendikar. Oh, I wasn't far off, but yeah. Battle of Zendikar, he did the core ally token. Totally. Oh, I would not have got. Yeah, I would have what guessed that in a million that? years. That's and then, so and then the next one, he did Unquenchable Thirst in Hour of Devastation. Yeah, to be fair, which is also very different. Which is very realistic. Then big jump to there, this OGL made, yeah. Drain for the, the sh- yeah, yeah, for the alternate art Empress Shieldbreaker. Yeah, the Shieldbreaker, I think, was the first time we saw them and we went, holy shit, this art style. He did a commander card for um, Strixhaven. For revival experiment, yeah, and then yeah, cool. fucking Kamigawa Fords, fuck the bone splinters from. Do you reckon that they Dominion had this United? moment of where they looked at his art style and went, "We now have more opportunity." Here. Yeah, hundred percent. Tested the water, people like it. They respond to it. We've also got all these cool yeah, alternate yeah, yeah, artworks yeah, yeah. for. Because I reckon for them, they probably get all of this artwork in. They don't necessarily know which one they're going to put it on. They probably don't know if they're going to put it on the dossier art treatment, the whatever the circle round realistic magnifying glass one is or a regular artwork yeah. they might not know which they're going to put it on and then they kind of maybe try the, them in different ways and they go which one works For, best in, in the way that Wiley Beckett when they came into the game they then brought in other artists that had you would say arguably a similar visual very style very similar style yeah. Dominic Mayer 
does exactly, work yeah. on say some of the key arts and then does sort of work in the actual game and then they're like who else does this like really striking two-tone graphic style fucking jeremy wilson yeah let's like, get them in as well i mean if you look at return to action in kamigawa it's a fairly standard like person who's like digital art and then all the kind of digitized <laughs> two-tone but it stands section. out so well and you yeah, might yeah, even yeah. consider it to be like a like to be minimalist because it is yeah and I think this is something that we, we I think we're going to say about and we have it I think we just both of us typically gravitate, gravitate towards these anyway the more abstract and the more minimalist your style the more striking we find it because it gives us the feelings of like old style artwork of where it didn't have to feel photorealistic again I stand by saying that certain arts if you can just take a picture if you can make if you can make an artwork that looks enough like a photo that you could take a photo, you probably should take take a photo. It's an impressive use of your of your craft. That's a hot take. It is, and I get it. And it's an impressive use of your art uh, of your craft. But the whole point is, that if it's not an interpretation but a mimicry of it, have you maybe missed the opportunities for them to push it into a direction of where a camera can't? You know. And I say this as someone who's seen people do fucking acrylic paint and like rain down a window and been blown away by how the fact it can look photorealistic. So again, take that with a pinch of salt. But in a similar fashion, Danny Schwartz, who does the Aftermath an- um, Analyst, who has only ever had one other card in actual paper printing, and that's the alternate artwork for Virtue of Strength uh, from Wilds of Eldraine. Mm. They have a very distinctive art style. They've also done Merfolk Tunnel, Gu- Merfolk Tunnel Guide and Mycoid Resurrection, which came out, I guess, in Arena 24, I'm guessing, from what, what the yeah, symbol is. Yeah. Both of which have very striking designs. Very... Um, uh, like almost neon popping kind of um, color, it's coloration. It's sort of like late eighties comic book stuff. Yes, exactly. And then even empty the pits, which I don't know exactly. I think this must have again, again been an arena printing because I don't recognize it from the original printing. I don't think it was the original printing, was it? Oh, it was. Oh, I take it back. I thought empty the pits was different. Maybe it's only the digital version. I think it's only the digital version because I haven't seen the artwork before. And again. It just has a really striking art, art style, has only really done a couple of artworks over the last couple of years, but I think they're the kind of person where they're going to lean into it more because, again, it just pops so much more. It has this real evocative style. It's very similar. It reminds me, although it's much more modern in terms of its inking and its composition, uh, John Higgins, who was the colorist for the original Watchmen graphic novel, yeah. where like skin tones were used as kind of like purples and blues for like regular ass humans like regardless of their what mm. you would consider their real world skin tone to be and like using color palettes that sort of you'd think doesn't work but creates a coherent visual narrative it's almost like how in venom however venom was always um illustrated in marvel comics it was with that blue and red tonal shift. yeah 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 so even though he's not blue or red it gives that brighter kind of vibrancy and also if you are Weirdly, it's a very, very niche reference, but if you are someone from England and you've seen the Tina, the Tina Turner um, kind of big movie poster, it's her in all vibrant different colours. Like mm-hmm. her actual regular skin, skin, skin tone colour doesn't come through at all. It's all blues and reds, mm-hmm. but if anything, that shows more of her colour off because it shows mm-hmm. how the colours are reflecting off of her natural tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really cool way to play with it. Um, a really cool art style. Yeah, I agree. Big very fan. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go back to back because I've got it right in front of me. Uh, we've got, in fact, I've got it right in front of me, right in front of me. Uh, we've got a new artwork for um, Lightning Helix, and this is an artist that I think we've spoken about a couple of times recently. And I'm just gonna lord it again, um, Eli Manaya, and they have again this really kind of um, coarse brushstroke effect. They did Get Lost from. Um, nearly said rivals again from lost caverns of ixalan they did the desecrate reality artwork which is um a um an eldrazi spell they did the spark rupture artwork which i have a play map for they did the song of night and day from dominary united um and they've got a couple of cards in this set they've got the push pull they've got lightning helix and then they also did oh i've lost it treacherous greed and I'm going to show you quickly, Andy, because this is not an art style that you really see very mm. often. It's very, con- it feels very confusing. It feels very, again, abstract, interpretive. You can glean different things from this artwork. It's not very much. It's not. This is what the artwork is. Here's a subject matter. Here's the point of focus. That's it. You don't have any interpretation going on. It's very, I, I, it, it, again, it's, it's it's coarse, abstract brushwork, and it pops sometimes on Magic: The Gathering cards better than your photorealistic ones will. And if we can keep getting this, and Eli's been getting a lot of cards recently, and this set they're getting three alone is really, really good. It's nice to see them. They're having more and more opportunity to express themselves, and they're having more and more opportunity to put it into the into sets. 
again, I think this is probably the best lightning art, lightning helix artwork that they've done. It has a little bit more going on than some of their other artworks. It's very different to say like the hex gold slash, which was from all the one of where the background yeah, very cool. dark white backgrounds when it's the artist proof card that comes in the pack god it looks fucking delightful i'd love to see some more of this i think it's really really pretty agreed shall we cap off by talking about the different frames yeah because we've got two we've got two in this one i don't actually know what the non-dossier i don't even know they're called dossier i don't think it's called the dossier treatment right it's, i think it's called something else let me let, let me let me check the joint in front of me and might actually say it do 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 Special guest is just full stretch art. Ravnica Clue obviously isn't relevant, even though, my God, the artworks on the fucking dual lands from that set are gorgeous. Temple Garden, holy nonsense. Breeding Pool, holy nonsense. They never miss. They never miss with Breeding Pool. I don't know how they do it. So the sh- it's called. So you've got the regular showcase, which is the dossier, mm-hmm. and then I don't know what they're calling the other one because they just lump them together, even on Mythic Spoiler. Just call it the Spyglass. Spyglass version, yeah. So you've got dossier and Spyglass. One of them, I think, is more uh, divisive than the other. Dossier. Yeah, and I get why. When you have all of them in, in front of you on a screen, all the different ones, it's much easier to tell colour identity. Uh, they're all white cards, aren't they? <laughs> what I mean is when you have them side by side, it's way more obvious. But individually... I don't think so. You don't think so? No. You can't tell at a glance. So, that so that one's I'm looking. So we're currently, for those listening, which <laughs> is you can't which, see. Is, which is everyone <laughs> who's engaging with this media, Nathan's holding up uh, his laptop because we're recording on mine with all of them next to each other. I think they all look a little bit naff. Uh, you have gifted me, thank you, a persuasive interrogators, a foil one no less, in the dossier treatment, and in my hand, mm. whilst I still think it's a white card, even though I know it's black pips, it does look better than on a screen. I'll give you that. I, do I, think I wasn't are, a fan of this when yeah. I saw it. I think there are big holdbacks. I think one of them that people don't realise is that the white mana symbol basically just fades into the background. Yeah, what the fuck is this about? That's How really weird. How did that get past How did that pass? R&D? Yeah, exactly. I, so I think there are... I definitely think that there are... So the, the border itself essentially is like... Um, if you've opened up a case file and one of the pages has slipped out, like mm. the border of it is showing other pages beneath it, it even has a little bit of binding... And the, the text font is from uh, old ch- 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 king, like an old typewriter. Now, right now, mm. this is where we get really into the weeds of: Do they have typewriter technology on Ravnica, or is this just a shorthand? So this, for me, feels like they're taking our real worlds, yeah. and then they're f- pushing magic onto it in a similar fashion from the storybook aspect of Eldraine. I think is a similar thing of where okay, yeah, they'll have books, but we are literally taking an old style binding of book that we do and making it and making a magic and making that a, a well, they've magic given it, card. They've given it some sort of like format. weird fantasy style fastening at the top as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But it is supposed to feel like if they had case files, then this is the ones that they'd have, you know, the fact that the regular text is in lowercase and then the, uh, the flavor text is in all uppercase, I think is nice. Again, we've, we said this, we said, we've said this over the years of I'd rather they keep trying new things and getting it wrong than being safe. And it not and not trying new things. Do you know what the interesting thing about this frame is specifically to other showcase frames that push the boat out? And actually, you could say the spyglass one sort of is similar, but is is kind of it proves my point in a different way. If you look at all the different showcases, whilst they not be might not be I perfectly symmetrical, they are all they're not. You wouldn't describe them as asymmetric. Like you know, the Eldraine showcase has relative dead space in the black bordering. Yeah. And it's the same with the Spyglass one. It's not symmetrical, but it has similar dead space. The dossier ones, full on just goes, it's like it's a black background mm. with a page flopped on top. Mm. And even the, the angle of the bottom part of the frame, where the artist's name is, is slanted at an angle. Yeah. They've really committed to it feeling like a not... It, it, again, to making it not feel like it's your the, traditional the, magic. The binding the of card. the dossier goes into the left-hand black border. Yeah. There's no left-hand black border it's at all. Fe- it feels very unsetting. It and does, I, yeah. And I don't have... And it's weirdly enough, again, I get why how people will say, but from a understanding what the card does point of view, it's confusing. And my argument to that is, then go and look at the regular printing. <laughs> and I know that sounds really shitty and childish. It's the same thing with Secret Les. This is a very, very abstract and, diver- and, and pushed version of a Magic the Gathering playing card. 
if you want to know the real version, you know the name of the card, put it into your phone, read the normal text version. If you're going to be that much of a twat about it, because yes, I get it. It's twat. different. Because <laughs> but I get there's a difference, because when you stray into twatish territories, when you go, oh, I, can't, I don't really understand what that card does. And you go, that's not a problem. Here, this is what the card does. And I can show you what it does. You fucking twat. In a normal printing. But then when you continue to dumb down and go, yeah, but I still hate it. It's like, but I've given you the understanding. The fact it's not written down on that card, fine. But there are certain maybe art styles that I would like to see in Magic the Gathering. Maybe I'd be really bored if it was just the same kind of styling every single time. Have we said the word twat on this podcast? I don't know. I've done twat and I did something else. Oh yeah, I said twat boy twice. I've said twat a lot this episode. <laughs> For all of our American listeners, we do understand that that word maybe Sorry, gets a little bit twat. harder. Don't, 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 don't. What well, I'm apologising? Oh no, I'm a, I'm apologising for the Britishness of us saying the word twat. We don't need to add in twat. Okay. I've, although I just have. Yeah. <laughs> I actually use that in my general vernacular because I, I, I like the way that it makes it feel more like an insult if you say, call someone, you don't have to be such a twat. No, but I like the flippancy of twat. Yeah. We really we really can't just keep repeating it. I know, right? <laughs> well, we've, we've got put through the main bulk of the episode. Now we're at the, we have opinions about things that are probably different to yours, so. I listened to the Auntie Donna, Donna podcast. Right. Who were Australians uh, And the amount of cunts They just fly <laughs> Well yeah You just throw one in here as well Fantastic Good job I love it I love it I do like that the fact That they haven't just Reskinned the cards as well Like they've given new artworks To each of them as well There are some Uncanny Valley versions Fugitive Codebreaker Has a really weird Humanistic quality to him If you, And again I'm going to show you Andy the screen here Side by side Codebreaker versus Cranko. Mm. The goblins Have a bit of a weird Interpretation diversity Going on When they all should Kind of look the same Well no Ah now oh, right. okay Do you know what Challenge Because I knew We were going to talk about uh, Crime novelist mm. Because obviously Why wouldn't we it's a, little, it's a story It's a story goblin I did On the way here I literally was thinking About goblins of the multiverse <laughs> As That's a do. great podcast name. Goblins of the Multiverse yeah. is good. I mean, it's a bit like the Goblin Law podcast, but whatever. I I kind of like the fact that because it's such a ubiquitous creature type, and so to, to differentiate themselves, they have to make all the goblins look like this from Zendikar, all the goblins look like that from Ixalan. The fact that Ravnica is the plane where they go, well, humans are really diverse in the way they appear. Why can't other races be as well? Yeah, we don't get any monkey goblins or orky goblins. No, they all they all have the same physiology. Mm. But some of them have bigger ears. Some of them have true. I guess there is diversity. Yeah, yeah. I guess slightly different point, skin tones. And again, oh, this is a weird thing to then stray into. I guess they've probably tried, but there are no human goblins, right? <laughs> there are no elf goblin. Those are the Marcadians. Marcadian goblins are basically. But you know humans. what I mean? It's like you don't actually see the whole. Hey, I'm in love with a goblin, and we had a lovely little. Mutant baby. Well, the, simi- uh, prob- the Simic are in this place. But you know what I mean? Yeah, but they, they do it after birth. Do you know? We're, <laughs> getting really long, we're getting really long in this episode, but I'm very fucking proud of this. I was looking back at my old decks mm. on, to go back to our pre title, <laughs> the chat that we were having. I was looking at my old decks on uh, Tapped Out, which is the antiquated system we use, rather than Architect or whatever. On Moxfield. <laughs> the description I gave for my Simic. Azuri deck that you used to also have one which is the blue green Azuri deck the description of hey how, here's the theme of the deck was literally what would happen if the Phyrexians invaded Ravnica the Simic would be the first ones to get on board with the situation and they actually did well obviously you know spoiler spoilers for the last episode I guess it was all like not really but like you know, well <laughs> even then yes kind of I was so like Fucking yes, of course the Simic. Mm-hmm. Even the writers of the goddamn game agree with me. The Simic would be totally on board with the way Phyrexians think. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So that was uh, the dossier one. Again, I think that the I think that they haven't done generic art style for them as well. Some of them are like flat anime style, like Atrata. Some of them are even like more artistically involved than their regular versions are. Oh god, I've accidentally done back. Fucking hell, honestly. Why is everything just a massive scroll in life? Scrolling through life until we die. <laughs> Um, Most <laughs> millennials um, And then you've got some that are more flat Then you've got some like Azoni where the art style is like really like It's it's suggestive It's not specific at all And even Lazav you get actually like him looking young You even get his eye in it Like Again it's, I, I like that we get more versions of certain characters I like that we get more versions of Magic the Gathering cards And then to, to kind of Copulate that into, into the other one Is that I think that the Spyglass version Might be some of the best Magic the Gathering cards Visually that they've printed ever. Yeah. And that's a hot take-ish, 
But you go and look at Insidious Roots now and tell me it's not fucking gorgeous. You go and t- go and look at War Leader's Call cool right now and not tell me it's gorgeous. You look at World Souls Rage right now and tell me it's not fucking gorgeous. I've got light rays coming from Cool Surprise Witness that look like they might actually be coming out of my computer screen. Do you do you think I agree with you? Do you think that we like these fr- imagine if these frames existed without the Lord of the Rings ring frame. Funny because I was trying to avoid the comparison because it is very very close. It's just circular frames, but... but but they did they didn't do the they didn't do the color around the outside of these like they no. did with the Lord of the Rings ones, which we argued made them feel very flat and very uninspired. The the negative space was filled with color, which actually made the negative space worse than just leaving it as negative. Did space. I argue that? Because I no, think I don't. I think you did. No, I think well, I think we I think we said that the, the art felt a little bit because too I lo- I love some of those arts. Yeah, no, the arts are great. What I mean is the colour around the Maybe, outside. Okay, yeah, it just yeah, felt yeah. like they basically created a load of negative space that then they just filled with blank colour for no reason instead I, of making it Do you know what? I couldn't it. tell you what a single card does from the Lord of the Rings set, but I can tell you what they all look like. Mm. <laughs> do you know what's funny? Is I've only just realised there's a third different art treatment that we haven't spoken about that I completely forgot existed. What's that one? That's the one where, you know how they did the aftermath and they gave us some Ravnica cards and they put the Ravnican architecture around the outside of the Oh, frame. yes, yes, yes. And yes, they did yes. six cards from the set. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry, I don't... The reason I didn't think of those as being the same thing is because they're not new frames. No, they're not new. But they also, we also hadn't had any new ones from them. And we got an extra six from the set. Um, five of the different guild leaders and then they'd miss it. Uh, I will argue now we're speaking about all the legendaries that it kind of annoys me that Delaney, the stupid little white got two paragraphs in the story character, yes. gets a mythic rarity for just being... Expensive card. Because it's mythic. Because... Oh, it's a two power tri it's like it's basically like uh, Elish Nord. It's a two power tribal or two power typal ETP doubler, which has no splashy real it's not really a splashy mythic effect. It's just powerful. And yet they made Aurelia, who has cool effects, a rare. And I'm like, but surely you should make your mythics the very cool legendary creatures that are in the set and give them cool legendary abilities and make it mythic, then take your generic random white doesn't matter. Of course, it was going to happen. Eventually, knocked over the wine. Uh, of course, we're <laughs> going to take. Wine at that. Of course, we're going to take this this random two like this random low drop, not really important character. We're going to make her a mythic by making or them a mythic. I'm not entirely sure of their um uh, gender di- uh, their gender definition. Um, I, let's make them the myth a mythic rarity because they do this really powerful thing and everyone's going to buy into it. it. That that feels like cash grabby to me. And it's, I only say it now because I notice it because Aurelia is a rare rather than a mythic when you could have made her a mythic. I've never quite understood what I their still stand by it. I still stand by it. It's a bit weird. I don't like it. I, I agree. I'm bit, not a big fan of it at all. But yeah, these spyglass effects. Again, these are where my, my photorealism argument falls flat because these are very photorealistic. And my God, do they look amazing. There's something really evocative about just a tratter looking at the camera. Uh, it doesn't add up going, but it's not me. And it's like you can see the emotion on her voice. Yeah. Uh, in a, on her voice, you can see the emotion in her face, and it actually is way more evocative. Unauthorized exit is so much better than the regular artwork. And the regular artwork, Prof is literally doing the thing of where the chest is popped out uh, uh, and doing like the running thing where you're running with your chest. And Andy knows exactly what I mean because I'm, I'm charading it for you. Go and look at the artwork for Dr- um, Unauthorized Exit and look at how silly Prof looks in his running pose compared to Unauthorized Exit from the spy gl- Spyglass yeah. frame. Very cool. It's very different. And I think, it, I th- again, whatever this was and why they did it. And why they needed to do two separate ones, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm actually kind of all for it because I think both of them have their own, their own place within the set. And again, if you think about it, if you look at all the dossier ones, maybe these are all the suspects, and maybe all the spyglass ones are all the ones that aren't the suspects. I don't think that's actually true, but maybe that's their def- their, their, their justification for it. Cool. Lots of go- lots going on for such a small set for such a small story. For yes, we've retried a load of mechanics, which again makes the set feel less individualistic and less kind of like there's more going on. I actually think that actually there is a lot of depth to it. And again, scrolling through through Mythic Spoiler is the easiest way to do it because you get all of the cards all together with all the different versions as well. And you can kind of see the care and attention they've put into the set. I just think mechanically the flavour could have been stronger when artistically I think the flavour is quite strong. Let us know. On Twitter, at MT Flavoring, what you make of this set. We know there are lots of fedoras. <laughs> but let us know what your favourite cards are, all that kind of good jazz. Um, I don't think I don't think we need to any final thoughts or anything similar to that. No. Emails go to at MT Flavoring at gmail.com. <laughs> uh, my personal Twitter is at Andy Face. Nathan's yours is. At the Fox in the Moon. Lovely. Be good to each other. 
Absolutely. Be good to us. Share this podcast with a friend. We haven't yeah. said that in a long time. Yeah, actually spread it. Spread it out a little bit. UK listeners, we're getting more of you. It only took us three years. That's because there have been continually no better options. I feel like eventually people just come to us and they realise. Also, we've had a couple of like shout-outs-ish like recently from people yeah. saying like, hey, these guys are good. Yeah, we tend to be, we're, we're quite, we're actually not bad at what we do. No. We know what we're talking about ish. We just, I mean, if you've got we just w- tend to drink too much and waffle a bit. If you've gotten through an hour and 40 minutes of this podcast, we hope you agree. Otherwise, what have you done with your time? Yeah. We'll be the long form podcast. <laughs> That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll undermine all of those other succinct, let's get, the, let's get the information out. And we'll just sit here and just chat the shit for a little while. I've been listening a lot to the EDH Rec podcast, which is odd for me because usually I don't listen to like watch play type mm. stuff. I, I quite like them. I quite like them, yeah. yeah. That's, there are always Dana Roach was so. one of our first ever followers on Twitter. Ever, ever. Not even just between our friends and shit. Do you reckon we can cross-pollinate, get them in on an interview or something? Like, what, what, what do they really care about? What can we What can we be divisive on the opinion of? Non-basic lands, from what I gather from their podcast. Okay, to be fair, we didn't mention it. There's another full art treatment non-basic land that is parallel. Um, is, is kind of symmetrical but not symmetrical. I wonder if there's a clue in there. I don't think there is, but it's kind of interesting to notice. We'll be at Magic Con Amsterdam. We will be! We said we might or might, might not be. No, we made it happen. We Andy, Andy Man even made the ticket happen for me because I accidentally paid one too many months' rent when I was moving house. <laughs> By the way, it's a loan. I didn't give yeah, you that money. Don't don't pay a deposit having not got your previous deposit back, and then paid an extra month's rent in the last place while paying the month's rent for the new place. Yeah, you're thirty-one. You should know that. Two. Oh no, you're thirty-two. Good job. Yeah, I know. I'm getting there. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Always a pleasure. We'll see you soon.